know that Kamar sir, who is a very renowned alumni, uh, who is a very prestigious alumni of our university and a very distinguished professor uh, at Iowa, has joined again uh, for giving us uh, for giving us insights regarding uh, specifically regarding the topic that is concerning to the graduates who are pursuing the degree of agriculture engineering. Although the topic that Sir has chosen is important and equally relevant to the people who are studying agriculture as well as allied sciences, but it somehow specific because it specifically relates its calls for sustainability. And sustainability is a concept whether you talk it or uh, it in terms of agriculture, whether you talk it in terms of production system, everywhere it is important. So as we all know that we have been in touch with Kamar sir in uh, uh, previous three sessions also. So for this session also, I expect that we'll be interacting with him. We'll be getting insights regarding this topic as well. So I welcome Kamar sir on the platform. Um, he has been very uh, very obliging in terms of giving his time to us and that too in uh, late night hours he he somehow manages to be with us so thank you sir for coming once again to the platform so initiating the session i first of all invite dr uc lohani sir who is a project scientist uh, at the uh, in the IDP and HEP project at Pantnagar for giving the welcome address and also telling us about, uh, tell, briefing us about the profile of Kamar sir. So, uh, Lohan sir, please. Okay, thank you very much, Deepthi. Uh, so, very good evening to all the participants and very good morning to Kamar sir. Uh, actually, uh, this is our uh, great moment to here, our Pantanagar alumni. Uh, so, I welcome Kavarsar also, welcome all the participants for this. Uh, uh, the role of agriculture engineering in world market. Uh, so, I will I would take this opportunity to introduce Dr. Kavar. As all of us, uh, most of us know about his uh, achievements and all the things in the area of uh, uh, water resource engineering. So, okay, so I'll take this opportunity to uh, go through his uh, uh, brief biography. Uh, so, Dr. Cover is currently the Charles of Curtis Distinguished Professor of Water Resource Engineering at Iowa State University. It's a proud moment for us to talk about this. He is an alumni and he did an in agriculture engineering in 1975 and uh, PhD in 1981 from Iowa State University. So he's alumni of Amtrak. He did his Amtrak from Pantanagar University. Uh, he joined Iowa State University in 1983 as a professor. And uh, 1991, he became the professor at the same university. And he was appointed director of the Iowa Water Resource uh, Research Institute in 1999 and head of the Agriculture and Biosystem Engineering Department at Iowa State University in 2001 for 10 years. He has worked as a consultant for the World Bank, Europe, European Commission, GEF, UNDP, USAID, NATO, FAO, and many foreign government and universities. These global opportunities have taken him to more than 65 countries. He has been a visiting professor to Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, China, Croatia, Portugal, Uzbekistan, and India, Fulbright Scholar to Macedonia. He is an honorary professor at both Beijing <coughs> University in China and Tashkent University of Irrigation and Agricultural Mechanization, Uzbekistan. He was awarded an honorary doctoral degree by the Georgian Agrarian University in Tbilisi, Georgia in 2000 and Turkia University in Bulgaria in 2007. He was elected fellow for the National Academy of Agricultural Sciences in India in 2001, fellow of the American Society of Agriculture and Biological Engineers in 2007, and fellow of Indian Society of Agricultural Engineers in 2012. He received areas Hanker Soil and Water Engineering Award in 2000, Kisida International Engineering Award in 1999, and John Deere Gold Medal in 2009 from ASABE. He received Outstanding Young Faculty Award, Outstanding Graduate Faculty Monitoring Award, and Excellence in International Social Service Award by our State University. Dr. Cover teaches and con conducts research in areas of drainage, irrigation, hydrologic modeling, and water resource engineering. 
He has been a major professor for 30 master and 31 PhD students. He has authored more than 600 publications, including 2000, sorry, 207 referred journal articles and 120 book chapter conference articles and 165 presented papers at international conferences. He has received more than $15.8 million for more than 100 research projects. So this big achievement is good in how uh, big personality Dr. Cover is. And that's why I uh, talked in the beginning that it's a great opportunity to hear in this moment. So I hope that our participants uh, from the Pantheon University and maybe some other university will take the advantage of him and uh, just learn something that will come up uh, in their future for their uh, career or for further study. So again, I welcome Dr. Kavar sir for this uh, talk and uh, I ask Deepthi to take it forward. Thank you, Deepthi. Well, uh, thank you, sir. So I request, I now request Kamar sir because uh, we have uh, briefly gone through his profile and huge lot achievements. So thank you, sir, for being on this platform. And now I, uh, I ask means it's my personal request to you to please proceed the session forward. Uh, thank you, Deepti, and uh, thank you, Dr. Lohani, for the introduction. Uh, let me start my um, presentation. Um, the title, I don't know if I had decided or, uh, uh, or it was given to me, but it's, uh, it's within my uh, passion, expertise. Uh, so I believe uh, Deepthi today, uh, students are from the College of Technology, right? Yes, sir. maximum students are from College of Technology. And uh, they are from Agricultural Engineering, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And other branches also or just Agricultural Engineering? Sir, so just uh, so maybe uh, means um, mostly are confined to agriculture engineering because in mostly PG students have also joined. So various branches means the five departments of agriculture engineering are covered. Almost. Okay, all right. And uh, would I be able to ask them questions uh, during my presentation to keep it a little bit more interactive? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. All right. Thank you. So let me go with my second slide. Um, yeah, if you allow me to start presenting. Uh, the, OK. Uh, in today's uh, seminar, I think we would like to uh, accomplish a um, couple of things. Uh, one is um, how or what role of agricultural engineers is in building sustainable uh, we might say agriculture production systems, but um, it's a building sustainable landscape. Uh, the land on which we all live, where the land is primarily utilized by roads, buildings, uh, but I think we are going to focus on uh, primarily other than concrete. Uh, a, uh, landscape would be used either by agriculture or could be forest lands or um, it could be hills, um, which are kind of uh, part of forest land. It could be rivers, it could be lakes. So we are going to look at natural system uh, landscape. And the second thing we are going to look at is the hydraulic system, which is hydrology. Uh, is our hydraulic system, our systems are sustainable, uh, which have never been because it's a, a kind of dynamic phenomena. So I think we are going to look at that. Uh, uh, Dr. Lohani gave very good introduction, but I just want to share with you, I did uh, travel a little bit longer. Um, I spent uh, time with one of the universities in India. I worked there uh, between 2011, 2014, 15, uh, for about four or five years, full time. Then I did go to one university in Azerbaijan, in Baku. Uh, I did spend uh, a little bit a year and a half there. So I think uh, in addition to working at Iowa State, you can take a leave of absence from here and uh, spend some time there to gain some experience or contribute uh, uh, over there. Uh, 
the hypothesis of today's seminar is that uh, my belief is unless we provide water security, food security, energy security, education, uh, health, human health security, environmental security to the societies at the grassroots level, which I'm going to emphasize time and again in the seminar, that uh, we should always think the local, uh, we might have a bigger picture that we want to uh, have a bigger uh, vision for the globe. But if we didn't serve the people at the grassroots level, our uh, contributions will not be recognized. Uh, so I would say, unless uh, the food security, water security, environmental security is assured at the grassroots level, our nation or rest of the world will have challenges in building sustainable and economically vibrant communities. Now the question is always going to be there, what role engineers are going to play in this one? So that means uh, uh, our students, uh, we got to train them, we got to provide them the tools, uh, how to examine uh, what the sustainable uh, challenges are, and through critical thinking, how they can develop solutions, uh, how they can identify problems. Uh, so unless they have the tools, uh, we will not be able to develop uh, sustainable solutions. Uh, I always say, this is what I said uh, to the students of College of Agriculture, uh, you are going to have uh, learning from different subjects. Um, whether you are taking uh, in, irrigation, drainage, machine systems, food engineering, different courses. You are going to equip yourself, uh, but uh, you have to have confidence in your abilities. Uh, the confidence is very, very important. If you don't have confidence in what you can achieve, what you can do, everything else becomes very secondary. And uh, the other part of the degree which uh, Pantanagar is going to provide you, uh, it should help you deciding your destiny. You can set your goals, sky is the limit for you. Uh, you can choose your pathways. Uh, people can help you, but you are the master of your own destiny. No body will come and go to that extent. And uh, one of the good thing about education is that you start thinking right. You start making independent decisions. And uh, it also helps you uh, making the decisions uh, for the uh, future. That Those are the kind of things uh, uh, you need to be moving on. Um, other skill sets, uh, make sure uh, you keep as a part of your, what you might say, soft skills, or you might say those are very essential skills to be successful in life. Uh, you should have excellent oral and written communication skills so that people can understand you, who you are, whether you have to express orally or you have to express uh, in a written way. You got to be excellent listener, uh, have a positive attitude, uh, and person of high ethics. Ethics are very, very important. And if you have high ethics, you are an honest person, you are a sincere, uh, you are dedicated to society, and you are dedicated to cause. And uh, confidence I already mentioned to you, uh, you should be leader in your own way. You should be a team player. You should cherish uh, success of others. And uh, you should be a good thinker, uh, an unselfish person, uh, hard to achieve. Uh, we are all selfish to some degree, but I think uh, selfishness you can hide and unselfishness you can expose. Those are the good things. Uh, let us start. Um, I start with this slide always. Um, what are the top humanities problems? Uh, those are the problems of sustainability, uh, energy. Uh, we are always uh, fighting sometime in summer, midsummer. Your electricity might go off. Uh, it's not assured for 24 hours. Your water in some cities, even in Delhi, sometime it's uh, off. You are, your taps run dry. And, in some cities of the world, the taps are running only a few hours a day. Uh, food security, we all see challenges. Some people have had, some people don't have, and some people are, have uh, more than enough. So food security is uh, kind of uh, questionable. Uh, environment, poverty, terrorism, 
uh, disease. So you can see it. Uh, these are the challenges our society has and our humanity is going to have for the next several years. And um, you all are going to be a part of the solution. So make sure that uh, whatever education you are receiving, engineers have a very important role to play, all professionals, uh, but uh, see how you can contribute to overcome these barriers for the society. Uh, there's one question, again, those couple, a few slides uh, you're going to share very common, which I share with everyone because they are very common to all disciplines. Um, put yourself in the year 2050 and begin to think what problem uh, we all are going to have, our societies are going to have. Uh, would you uh, be able to grow uh, enough food to feed 9 billion people by the year 2050? Would we have clean drinking water for 9 billion people? Would we have clean energy resources? Would we have clean environment? Would we have sustainable systems? Uh, those are the questions. If you don't have questions, you don't have solutions. Uh, so I think um, uh, ask yourself, um, are those questions relevant to you or these questions are valid and um, how you will be a part of them? Uh, I shared these slides. Reason is uh, they are very, very important. Uh, we are talking about food sustainability. Um, I don't know how much money you spent uh, every week at Panthragar. I, I can tell you what I used to spend uh, when I was a student uh, back in 75 there, um, 74. Um, our, um, all the three, four meals uh, in the hostel, uh, it used to be, it was uh, less than 100 rupees. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, and per month. Uh, so this is how it was uh, during our time. But uh, in the US, uh, the cost is about $300 per family. If you look at California, which is part of US, some families are spending uh, half of that. That means even within a country, uh, people are surviving on far less so the equal distribution of wealth is not there in any country. If you go to Canada, it's very similar, $300 a week. Mexico, 150. Germany, a bit more expensive, $400. Uh, France, 350. Now, there's a book, how much it costs. So you can Google the book and you can find all these pictures and all these costs. Italy. Turkey, Egypt, Japan, China, about 130, India, I calculated exactly $132, uh, uh, which might be close to $2,400 rupees a week for an average family, but it could be more, uh, it could be less, I don't know. Um, Chad, 48, Mali, 21. So I think you could see um, every country has constraints, uh, the richness, or you might say the level of uh, spending power or the income distribution is not equal around the world. So the question comes for all of us. If you look at this slide, um, you see a landscape. Uh, this is a typical landscape in Iowa in one of the watersheds. Uh, are these watersheds sustainable? So what is the definition of sustainability for these landscapes? How would you define these watersheds are sustainable? So we will look into that question. How would you define that the hydrologic system for a watershed looking like this uh, will not cause unsustainable issues? Um, if uh, we were in an interactive mode, I would have asked you a question. What could be potential unsustainable issues on this watershed? Uh, they are farming. Uh, those are large farms. Uh, they are ups and downs. They are rolling topography. There are some hills. Um, they are doing strip cropping. One row of corn, the second row of soybeans. The light-looking color is soybeans. Um, every 
piece of land is covered somehow, which is a indicator of sustainability. Uh, so let us uh, try to see how, if we can define what does that mean. So what is the definition of sustainable watersheds or sustainable hydraulic systems? One thing in the watershed you got to look at is you have healthy soils always. Whenever it rains, whenever it, uh, there might be a windstorm, soils don't erode. Soils are in place. Soils are healthy. Soils are rich in organic matter. From engineering point of view, soils have high infiltration rates. So water can move into the soil. Water does not flow over the land that much. Uh, those are some of the characteristics of healthy soils. Uh, uh, soils are full of microbial activity. It can sustain uh, the production system, whether it's agriculture production system or uh, horticulture production system or uh, forest land. They are rich in biodiversity. Uh, the plants and animals, wildlife uh, is plenty. If you start disappearing wildlife, uh, uh, that means the watersheds are not sustainable. And uh, Uttarakhand, the state which you belong to, is full of biodiversity. I took a, um, what I call, uh, uh, four Dham uh, tour by helicopter from Dehradun uh, to Badrinath, Kedarnath, Jamnotri, uh, Gangotri, four of these places. And um, helicopter helicopter took us there. So I could take lots of pictures of the watersheds in Uttarakhand. So I will share with you some of those pictures, uh, uh, how the sustainability we have maintained in Uttarakhand for thousands of years and what we are doing now. Uh, those are the challenges. Uh, the sustainable watersheds also provide uh, the needed food, fiber, energy, water, clean water for the people they live. They provide clean environment. That's why people want to go for vacation to the hills. When um, I was in Pantanagar, we went to Nainital, uh, Nainital Lake. It was clean. The water was blue. And uh, I went uh, after 20 years again, um, that it was not looking that clean. So what we have done, uh, so we look and in, look into some of the causes. So whether they are ponds, uh, lakes, springs, they're healthy and alive. In the hills, there used to be springs. Those of you are, who are coming from the hills, uh, and uh, I know in my earlier seminar, there were lots of students from the hills of Uttarakhand. Uh, there used to be springs, and springs used to be the major source of water for agriculture. And all springs have dried up. What has happened? That means our hydraulic system has become uh, unsustainable. So I think um, when we say the hydraulic system is sustainable, that means our nature, our plants, our animal, and the people can coexist happily. Those are the kind of uh, natural systems which are sustainable. That's the definition. So what we have done? What is the number one cause? I always come back. It's a population. You might disagree with me, but uh, look at, um, and I will share with you some of the data, which is very startling. Uh, between 1800 to almost 1947, we got independence. Um, the population increase globally was not that large, but look at what has happened uh, after that. Even in India, the population has been pretty close to 354 million people. It was joint India, uh, I would say, maybe in 1947, it was close to 500 million. For 100 years, the population of India was not changing that much. Reason there were famines, there were disease, there were hunger, there were wars. We were under uh, other uh, uh, foreign uh, powers, uh, so there were lots of issues. But population is one thing, um, and uh, which has uh, disturbed our uh, natural environment. Uh, when you have more people, they need more food. You need more water, and we try to take all those natural resources and make them polluted. 
Second uh, major global challenge is energy. We are seeing it. We are depending dependent very highly on fossil fuels. When I was growing up, uh, we had no electricity. Uh, there was a kerosene, uh, very small amount. We didn't have any cars. Uh, even hardly had any bikes. Uh, so mostly, there was uh, not much fossil fuel used. And look at see what's happening right now. So. Third is climate change. Everything we as humans are doing, uh, we are uh, impacting the environment. Uh, when you need more food to grow on land, you disturb the land. When you go uh, need more water to drink, you disturb the land, you disturb the hydraulic system. Uh, our uh, climate change is going to eliminate some of the sources, rich sources of water of the hills which are we call glaciers. They are melting because of the temperature rise. And if this is a clean water, which is kept in the snow mountains, but when it melts, it goes back to the ocean. It becomes saline. So we make that water polluted. Uh, so those are the kind of things that are happening. So fourth issue is sustainability, which either too little water, too much water, too polluted, or too expensive. Um, and the last issue I will put on is even health is an issue. Uh, environmental quality is disturbing us. Everything we are doing, we are polluting. Our agriculture is becoming a source of pollution. Look at the amount of soil erosion we are causing because of the agriculture. We are growing animals. We are growing poultry. Uh, we are causing pollution. Our uh, cities are growing, um, and we don't have the waste treatment systems in the cities. That's causing pollution. Our industry is increasing. We don't have environmental control there. Industry is polluting. You keep on naming it. I think everything our society does uh, becomes a source of pollution. Uh, and that is disturbing the uh, sustainability. Uh, I have shared this slide also. Uh, but look at there. Uh, uh, how much water is in the ocean? So you know very well. Uh, how much water we have fresh water hardly our fresh water is 2.8 percent and out of that 2.8 percent water 2.15 percent is in glaciers tapped snow whatever water you see in the rivers ponds lakes groundwater you know how much it is it is seven tenth of a percent less than one percent on which we all survive and uh, glaciers have been feeding our major rivers. Look at Ganges is flowing uh, because the water is coming from the glaciers. Uh, and guess what? If the waters, uh, glaciers are gone, and there is a prediction by the year uh, 2000 or 2100, uh, most of the glacier might be melt, melted away. Uh, simply uh, because of global warming, okay, or climate change. Yeah, if, if it didn't do anything, if you can reduce the rate of global warming, glaciers can still stay there. They can still become healthy. They can still become sustainable. Otherwise, our rivers are going to get dry. Some of the rivers, look at Satluj, Bias, they used to be flowing throughout the year. Uh, when Satulish passes through open job, I would say half the time or most of the time it's dry except during monsoons. So something we have done uh, which uh, we are not able to handle it now. Uh, let's look at uh, all, you, know, you can always take a lesson from the history. Uh, so I am going to share with you one data. And then you bring uh, yourself into it as engineers. What can you do about it? In 1947, when India became independent, we had about 390 million people. Uh, I think million sign is missing. You can uh, add it. Pakistan and Bangladesh were only 30 million each, uh, approximately. Um, in 2020, and that's another error in this slide. It's a 2020. I pulled out the data. We are one point. 4 billion people right now, 1384 million, okay? 
So our population has increased 3.5 times. Look at our neighboring country, Pakistan. They have increased almost six times. Look at Bangladesh. They have almost increased 5.5 times. So although India has done relatively well, our neighboring country's pressure is going to come to India directly or indirectly, either through migration or uh, uh, unless they didn't develop sustainable systems, uh, countries do get impacted. And look at what we have done between uh, those years in terms of grain production. We have increased the grain production by five times between 1947 and 2020. Wheat production by 15 times, maize production 14 times, milk production eight times, you keep on going. That means even if our population has increased, we have fed them well, but there are consequences for the agriculture. And what are the consequences? Look at uh, earlier famines were occurring and uh, maybe we could, uh, and it is true. Uh, I would say we were under foreign rule and they did nothing to help us. Uh, between uh, 59 and 63, that was my childhood. Uh, India was facing famines, locust damages were coming. And I will give you one example in 1962-63, India imported 26 million tons of grains from US alone. Uh, there was a scheme under PL 480. And, uh, and during the same time, because uh, of the food security, Patra University was established and PH those two universities. And these two universities have solved India's uh, food security problem, primarily these two universities uh, at that time. And uh, so universities, because uh, they did research, they produce good varieties. Uh, they develop a good agriculture mechanization systems. They develop some of the best irrigation systems. And uh, look at the uh, Thrai area of uh, Uttarakhand, which was a jungle. Uh, there's a Jim Corbett Park. Uh, look at the area around it. It was a pure jungle. And it has become one of the most productive area of the India, I would say, of the world uh, because of the contributions. But um, I have an uncle, he lives in Kashipur, he has a farm. I used to go there to Kashipur. The population of that city was very small. But now I won't be surprised, it's uh, close to a million. I have no idea. It is crowded all the time. Uh, Rudrapur was right next to Pantanagar, very sparsely populated. Uh, it was a kind of village. But look at now, uh, Rudrapur, uh, what has happened. And um, that's a common phenomenon for the rest of India. Um, so what uh, India did to solve the food uh, issue, we started kind of green revolution in 1965. And amazingly, by 1975, in 10 years, India had solved its food security issues. Instead of uh, people getting hungry, we have at least plenty of food in the market. If you have money, you can afford to buy it. And the government has done very well. Uh, people who couldn't afford it, government has given them subsidized food. Where is which part of the world can give you one kilo of rice for two rupees? Uh, on uh, some of the uh, what are, what we call uh, Russian uh, shops. Uh, so India has done marvelously well in distributing uh, food to even poorest, poorest of the poor. But we tried to deforest the areas. We brought uh, lots of land in agriculture. It was highly intensified. We brought machine systems. We brought chemicals. Uh, lots of water we started using for irrigation. And when we use excessive chemicals and excessive water, uh, we do waste. So that's what happened. Uh, for deforestation is probably one of the major causes of uh, sustain unsustainability. Groundwater recharge was not taking place because water was flowing into the rivers rather than recharging groundwater. Water tables were 
being pumped for uh, through tube wells for irrigation. The springs were drying up, the rivers were drying up, the flooding was taking place more often. Uh, so I think uh, it all these causes made our agriculture production systems unsustainable. So we might take pride that agriculture engineers uh, played a very major role in automation of uh, agriculture, but uh, we failed in having environmental control. We kept uh, our eyes very heavily on uh, producing more and more, but we kept a blind eye what was happening to our declining water tables, what was happening to our declining water resources, what was happening to uh, pollution of water resources. Now we are coming to that particular stage in India. Uh, I would be saying it will be very difficult to find any place in India where we can find clean drinking water except pockets of hills. Yeah, pockets of hills, I would say. Uttarakhand is still in a much better shape in terms of water quality. I will give you a few examples of what has been happening uh, for centuries, uh, agriculture. But rice has become a major crop. It should not have been in some areas. Um, but um, let me give you a few uh, things what we do now. Uh, in the plain tri areas, uh, we prepare the land, right? We have plenty of tractors. Uh, we have plenty of water. Now, although the tube wells are getting deeper and deeper, we pump water, we flood the areas. And we have tractors, we churn the uh, mud and create a puddling. Uh, we have the tools. Uh, uh, this is the role of agricultural engineers have played very well in providing irrigation water and uh, machine systems. And then we let the soil settle down. Next day we come and uh, we start planting. And uh, some of these slides are from your neighborhood. Um, and uh, this is what we're doing in terms of uh, planting rice in the uh, plains of uh, Uttarakhand. Um, but when you look at uh, the rice cultivation areas, it looks like a lake, the entire belt during the rice planting time looks like this, whether it's in UP, Haryana, Punjab. So what we are doing it? It's a, is it a sustainable use of water? This is what has made us water scarce country because we didn't handle things very well. Uh, there are systems, drip irrigation, there are systems of sprinkler system, there are other drip irrigation you now we are putting in the fields. But where did we go wrong? Uh, where our engineering didn't play the right role? So I think we, there are challenges from engineering perspective. Uh, let's look at some uh, Uttarakhand. Uh, you know, there are plenty of slides available online, uh, but uh, there are a few slides I took when we were taking a helicopter ride. You can zoom the lens and uh, take pictures. And this is the agriculture in hills. Uh, you go uh, uh, in the upper part of Uttarakhand, uh, close to the uh, Nepalese or Chinese, uh, that border, you will find uh, these uh, scenes very often and um, how people are kind of maintaining these uh, terraces. But these terraces are not 10, 15, 20 years old. They are hundreds of years of old. So if you look at this picture, I would say uh, these are the kind of watersheds which are highly sustainable because soil, they don't allow soils to erode from the terraces. Uh, they are doing multiple different type of cropping now in hills. and. Uh, this is one crop in uh, Dehradun area. Uh, I would like to see uh, you engineers help the horticulture people. Uh, you work with the students of agriculture to change the landscape of Uttarakhand. Uh, rather than uh, growing rice and other crops, so we can grow lots of fruits. And uh, leech is one example, but mangoes is another example. You decide what will bring the economy of Uttarakhand more vibrant where engineering role can play. Um, Uttarakhand has a capacity to provide leeches for the rest of India. If you have excess, you can it. If you have too much, you make leachy juice. 
the food processing industry, food engineering uh, play a role. Uh, the, the harvesting system, uh, look uh, how we are doing uh, lychee harvesting. Uh, this is the typical uh, where engineering is. You could come to California, they will tell you how they are harvesting apples, uh, how they are harvesting oranges, uh, because they are developing mechanized systems. So I think uh, <clears throat> uh, the time is gone when cheap labor was available. Now we are not getting enough labor to um, even plant uh, rice uh, paddock uh, fields. Uh, so uh, yields are good. If you can harvest 3,000 tons of uh, leeches in one acre, you can do the economics, uh, how much a farmer can make money. Uh, but engineers can turn the economy if uh, our Pantra University can develop some priorities how to revive the economy of the hills. Uh, but this is also we are doing. We are deforesting the hills, and uh, that has caused uh, lots of uh, issues. Uh, energy issues in the hills are still there. Uh, I, we have not solved. Uh, so engineers uh, should help, whether you bring the solar energy or you may bring bioenergy to the hills. I think it uh, potential is huge. Uh, uh, systems. Um, again, uh, I brought some examples from Thailand. Now, one thing uh, my, I will share with you some sites from Philippines too. You go to Philippines, you go to Thailand, you go to Himachal Pradesh, you go to uh, Manipur, um, you go to any hills. Culture, agriculture is very similar. No difference. Uh, the only difference is in Thailand, in, uh, people have learned how to manage better. Uh, they are doing bit better in economic system. They are developing better markets. They are diversifying agriculture compared to us. Uh, so look at uh, some of the uh, machine system they are using in Thailand. Uh, look at some of the other system they are using in Thailand. Simple threshing of rice. Uh, I have not seen this kind of system in India. We simply bring on the ground and then we pick it up, but they put directly into the big ball. Uh, maybe the systems are more efficient. Uh, diversification is taking place very much over there. And uh, another thing I want to highlight is we are sending our students from Iowa State to Thailand uh, for summer internships. Uh, so rather than uh, some of the students from Pandraga looking for internship in the US, I think you should go to these countries, Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar, uh, Vietnam, to learn uh, some of the multiplication or diversification techniques. Uh, lots of engineering tools they have developed, which we can bring to our own. We can learn from each other. Uh, I think that's another thing we need to do with our education system. In Philippines, some of these uh, terraces, I was told, they are 3,000 years old. Nobody can beat. They have been sustainable. And some of these hills are so steep, even if I have to walk, uh, I will have a painful legs. Uh, I don't know how the farmers are doing farming there. At 70, 50, 60 percent slopes, uh, that's what Philippine is. Uh, but again, uh, those are complex systems. Uh, I will share with you. Uh, let's uh, look at a um, uh, little bit uh, closely. If I look at this slide, I will say this watershed is sustainable. There are trees, uh, there's a crops, and uh, groundwater recharge will take place. Uh, the flooding will be minimized. After rain, it will be a clean watershed. Soil will not erode. So this is what we got to bring in in terms of sustainability. Uh, in Iowa, we have not done uh, that good job. We have deforested uh, much of Iowa, but uh, we are getting into other tools and uh, no-till farming rather than uh, keeping the ground uh, clean all the time. We are making sure some cover is there so the soil does not erode. Uh, our engineering is um, according to those uh, systems, uh, whether we are doing uh, cultivation, whether we are doing chemical application, we are providing these systems uh, for our IWAS agriculture, whether it's a contour farming, strip cropping, and I believe similar sort of engineering, you got to help uh, uh, Uttarakhand farmers first, then India, and then finally start thinking about the globe. All agriculture engineers are trying to make impacts locally first. If you don't make local impacts, I don't think we will be appreciated very much. And 
even if our landscape is clean, look here, uh, I think uh, you see if it rains on a day like this, it's going to cause erosion. But uh, the way we have built the terracing system, we have built uh, some of the buffers along the um, uh, rivers or streams or creeks, very little soil will be allowed to erode into the river. So this is what we call sustainable uh, kind of watershed systems. Uh, we have drainage systems. Uh, we have uh, dairy systems. Uh, we create lots of waste. We collect them. We spread them on the land. And these are all systems designed by agricultural engineers. So you don't need to play a role uh, at one place. Even you got to work with the food engineers to play machine system people to help them to design and develop systems. Dry manure systems are then I, can you apply uh, uniformly? Uh, can you do much better way to do it? Small systems, but you can do it really well. So agriculture, sustainability issues, uh, challenges uh, are there. And uh, there are other systems uh, we call vertical uh, farming. And uh, all these systems are designed by agricultural engineers, environmental controls how much humidity to be maintained, what kind of irrigation system got to have, how the substrate for these, uh, or the, what I call media, uh, the soil types uh, you got to create, which uh, plants can have. Uh, these are all shaded areas, uh, and uh, uh, chemical use is very little, uh, but the water systems are highly sophisticated. And um, the temperature and humidity control, all these sensors, the technologies that are being utilized here, and uh, that's what it is. So look into um, the future. Uh, engineers have a, a very important role to play. Um, and um, I wish you the best. Uh, I hope you ask questions. I have kind of uh, challenged you uh, through these uh, remarkable slides. But I have kept my focus in this presentation, Uttarakhand. Uh, because uh, it's a land grant university, and your first responsibility is to be part of uh, Uttarakhand's economic system. Your first responsibility is to help the people of Uttarakhand become more economically healthy and make sure that Uttarakhand watersheds become healthy. It's possible, it can be done, uh, but I think uh, engineering has to play a very, very important and major role. Thank you very much, uh, Deepthi, Dr. Uh, Lohani. Uh, I would be open to the questions. I would love to see interaction uh, with the students now. Uh, well, uh, thank you, sir. Sir, I feel you can uh, stop sharing your slides uh, because you will be visible on the screen. And uh, because two uh, of the participants, Abhinash ji and Anita ji, are already uh, unmuting their mic, so I think they might be having some questions relevant to today's talk. So I request Abhinash ji and Anita ji uh, to please ask their questions. Um, I think I'm still having difficulty sharing my... Uh, Hi. Is it off now yet or no? Uh, no, sir. So there might be an option of stop presenting on your screen. I think uh, this is what I did. Uh, hmm. So it's done. It's done? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, good. Now, Deeply, I can see you, so that means my slides are gone. Yes, sir. All right. What happened? Um, uh, uh, when I gave a webinar to the College of Agriculture, I had uh, close to 80 plus students, and uh, I'm seeing only 16, 17 here. Is that number correct, or I'm having... Uh, sir, right now 27 participants are there in the mean in the session. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, actually the reason is the final examination are going on. So, ah, so. That some students are not uh, uh, attending this. So, picked up the wrong week for the webinar, right? 
<laughs> now I think uh, then I should compliment the students who are in the seminar. Yeah. So it's a humble reminder to all the participants. If there are any questions uh, which are relevant to today's talk, uh, you are most invited to ask your question. Please unmute yourself and ask the question. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, myself, Hiram, sir. I have completed master and tech in ID, sir, from Pandaga. Presently, I'm passing PhD from IRA. Oh, you are uh, speaking from IR, right? Pusa, Delhi. Actually, uh, sir, I am at home right now, and uh, as okay. it is online course. Sir, uh, my mm -hmm. query is that as you have an uh, distinguished, uh, means you have an eminent uh, career, uh, you had an eminent career until now. So, how to balance between uh, writing up, uh, means how to, means there is a one way of writing like paper present, papers, publishing more and more papers. And the other one is working in the fields, working in the working for the for the, for the farmers. Means how to uh, balance uh, between these. Means uh, some people will always uh, do go for publications and all, and someone will work in the field level. So how to strike a balance between these? Sir? Thank you. Um, you know, uh, when I was at uh, Pantanagar. Um, my major professor used to spend uh, almost entire Sunday with me. He will call me home. Uh, it was a winter time. Uh, we will sit in the lawn and uh, I was playing with my mathematical equations. My thesis title was on groundwater hydrology. Uh, so professors and students used to work very hard um, and that's where I learned. My uh, first two papers were published for master's thesis when I was still a student. It was not very common at that time. But uh, if uh, the major professor has a good mentoring, good motivation for students, things do happen. Uh, so I think uh, it's a kind of relationship between the two. Uh, relevant to your question, how to publish papers and how to support farmers. I, when I became part of faculty, I learned one thing in my career. I need to bring grants. If I can bring money, I can hire some of the best and brightest students in the world. So the first student I hired from Pantanagar, I had a grant at Iowa State. I went to Pantanagar, I asked them, yeah, my major professor was still there, if I could get to, uh, your number two or three student or number one. So I got the gold medalist, he came. So uh, uh, the key is hire the best and brightest students. There I will write the papers and I can serve the farmers. So this is how I have it done throughout my career. If you look at all my papers, uh, 600 papers, I would say 500 papers are maybe, or 550 are written by students. I was a support, like I learned at Pantanagar, major professor has to be part of you. Uh, we spend time together, we cherish each other, we don't bring any barriers. PhD student and professor are just like friends, they are colleagues. That's how it, things happen. Good question. I think a system is okay. Hello, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, myself, Dheeraj Kumar Yadav. Uh, I did my MTech in Process and Food Engineering from G.V. Pant University in 2020. Yes, sir, Yes, sir, actually, I have had questions. Yes. Because, uh, sir, there is a bigger challenge, biggest challenge uh, you told in uh, up to 2030, uh, we have, we need uh, a more than 50% food productions. And uh, up to 2050, uh, 50, uh, we need uh, more than 90% food productions. Then, sir, what we what may be the solution for this? Because uh, uh, nowadays, uh, mostly people are not uh, much interested in 
in the production of vegetables or uh, dairy dairy products because uh, people wants to uh, shift uh, in urban urban uh, urban places and not uh, much interested uh, in production of in these products uh, like dairy products and not uh, going to uh, means cattle uh, what we can say well because uh, this is the biggest challenge sir what maybe the solution nirav uh, i will uh, bring that question back to you we should ask uh, you are a food engineer you are a food process engineer yes. have we done a good job in helping these um, uh, farmers uh, who are having dairy cattle or they might have uh, poultry or they might have a uh, uh, swine production system or goat production system as food engineers yes. uh, probably they are they are moving away because we didn't uh, add the value into their uh, uh, production system india has become number one country in yes. terms of milk production in the world yes sir uh, it's still number one okay but yes, uh, are we number one in cheese production are we number one in uh, other uh, by products of uh, uh, dairy products uh, milk is selling maybe 40 50 rupees a kg but uh, if you buy to buy it, good quality cheese uh, at amsterdam airport uh, yeah. you will spend about 20 dollars for 1 kilo of uh, uh, cheese uh, but uh, we have not done that uh, by product uh, uh, you go to some of the european countries switzerland uh, look at their dairy industry look at the value addition in terms of dairy products yes so i think uh, we engineers have to take responsibility we are and living in a very different uh, uh, what i call uh, paradigm uh, uh, we need to identify the problems of farmers yes. many uh, people are not interested in even in agriculture uh, i gave you the data of uh, 1947 and data for 2020 in terms of grain production in terms of milk production look what india has done so if you can put things together uh, we can achieve Yes. india's uh, agriculture is going to be number one economy uh, whatever it takes uh, for a long time uh, in the us uh, agriculture is still a major economy but only 2% population is working in agriculture uh, because of automation but i think uh, the challenge we have as food in years i gave you example of lychees yes uh, we have uttarakhand could be the hub for horticulture i would say the climate is there the soils are there but um, our farmers are poor hilly people are very poor um, what we are not doing it uh, and i would say we as engineers got to take responsibility that somewhere we have failed as uh, food engineers somewhere we have failed as soil and water engineers somewhere we have failed as machinery engineers um or animal production engineers um, yeah i think uh, we do have the capability i would say uh nirav if you get a chance try to go to thailand uh, some of the agriculture departments and see what food engineering they are doing they are taking a, sa- a single crop uh, they can take jack fruit in thailand you will see 20 by products selling at uh, bangkok airport and uh, look at delhi airport do we see any jackfruit product selling <laughs> maybe dry dry jackfruit maybe so i think uh, even the uh, countries who are poorer than us have done lot better in food processing engineering than what we have done if uh, we would have revived the food process industry even in uttarakhand in any part of india our economy would have been totally different totally different we are just exporting raw materials raw rice raw wheat raw maize uh, we are not processing it for by products yes sir yeah good luck you have a future i think uh, you can set up any small industry even a pickle making uh, and a uh, flood the market uh, bring the prices down and take over i think this is probably going to the future yeah Yes sir thank you sir Well uh, thank you sir
for answering all the questions and I hope uh, whatever uh, you deliberated today was a food for thought like thing because obviously we uh, if we are associated with agriculture or as an engineer if we are aligned to our discipline obviously we need to think it in terms of how we can relate it to the societal cause. If we are studying some discipline, if we are following it as a profession, obviously <coughs> we have the responsibility that yes, we should confront the social problem. We should be able to relate. We should be able to find out and explore how our discipline will cater the needs of the society. Thank you, sir, for putting your valuable insight and the way you guided our students in comprehending the discipline with a different perspective. That was a very nice thing that I took as a, a final message. So uh, concluding, uh, putting the session towards the conclusion, I request all the participants to put their videos on uh, if they can afford to and invite uh, UC Lohani sir for the concluding remark and for the vote of thanks, please. Thank you, Diti. Very nice uh, comments. I kept the focus on the hills of Uttarakhand today. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful landscape if you go to uh, some of the hills areas here. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. You're most welcome. Anytime you can come here. We are here to, uh, you know, uh, wherever you go, we can take you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the last time when when we have visited in uh, Pantanagar. Uh, I was there in 2020 December. Uh, in fact, uh, before no. 2019. 2019. Yeah, 19, 2019. Yeah, December. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So mm -hmm. uh, now uh, we are coming to the end of the session. And uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you to Kawasar to uh, deliver this wonderful talk among our uh, UG and uh, master's students and share his relevance. Uh, of course, you are right, sir. <laughs> Probably I chose the wrong time to uh, for the start, but hopefully we will hear you in future at the correct time. Uh, anytime, so anytime. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you so much, sir. This is always uh, uh, means expected from you. Uh, so I think uh, uh, the talk that you have delivered today uh, that that uh, deals with the and differentiate the. Uh, farming practices and production technologies in India and all over the world. So our engineers can uh, learn these things and uh, can uh, uh, take over those technologies. And uh, I think uh, somebody says that uh, uh, it, it is only in mind that India is 10 years back or 20 years back. But if you really wish to take India ahead, so it is in our shoulders. We can do that. Okay, so there is no doubt in that. So it is our willpower. If you want to do it, you can do. So thank you so much, sir, one more time uh, to spare your valuable time to give a wonderful talk among the students. And I am very, very thankful to all the participants. OK, so to uh, listen this talk and to learn uh, some uh, uh, valuable things from this talk so that you can uh, uh, take over those uh, learnings in your future, in your career, in your research work. If you are doing master or PhD, if you are doing undergrad, so you can think about the master uh, from India, from Good Institute or from abroad, and you can take over all these learning technologies. So thank you one more time. And uh, at the last, uh, I would like to thank Deepti. Uh, she is very good taking care of all the uh, even events, whether it is from agriculture college or technology college. So she's all around for us. So she's handling uh, everything very well. So thank you so much, Deepti, for creating link, for creating posters to publicize. So I think yeah, without uh, your uh, support, it wouldn't be possible to deliver this kind of talk and this kind of webinar. So uh, thank you, Deepti, to give me this opportunity to give a word of thanks. So I'll take you to, uh, to move forward to the end of the session. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lohani, for inviting me, and thank you, Deepti. For, you, you are always a, a very good help in getting these slides moving uh, on uh, Microsoft Teams. Yeah, thank you so much, and bye now. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye. Good evening. Bye-bye. Good evening, sir. Uh -huh.